I think there is a statement of too much fan mail. There is a lot of fan mail to unbox this time, mostly because the last time I did a fan mail video, I filmed one video and then I went back and filled the fan mail video in the same shirt and everything like that. And I didn't like how the original video I shot first came out. So I deleted it, thinking I was just gonna come back out here and restart it. And I forgot that I filled the fan mail video and the fan mail video and that video had the same shirt. So I didn't register that I shot two. Yeah, it sucked. That was terrible. So here I am once again, unboxing everything that they have sent me and it's not gonna be nearly as good because I had already opened everything up and I've seen all the surprises, but there are new boxes because there's a lot of stuff to unbox. So uh, let's get to it. I'm gonna start with the rest of the package of what Fatty Botchi sent me, which was the stuff he sent me when I needed the missiles for the Judgment Day. I basically went to the Fussy Walrus Discord channel and I was like, I need 10 demolisher rockets. And he said, I got you fam. And I was like, holy crap, thank you. So here's his beautiful wax sealed note typed up with a stamp and everything and it reads morning of sunday june 11th so you can see it's been over a month since i well since he did this i mean yeah you can tell here are the munitions that you've requested using form 21a signed in triplicate also included are armament that had been accumulated over the past year designated for your person summit nerf wishes you the best of luck and is happy to ride back up anytime it is needed by David, aka Fatty Botchi, aka Pirate David, aka Summit Nerf, aka the artist formerly known as Pirate Botchi. And there is a link down here to their Summit Nerf Facebook group, which I will definitely have in the description box below. And it says there will be a, a YouTube when I get around to it, but with all the hobbies I have, who knows how long it will take. And this guy does have a lot of hobbies. I've done a lot of talking to him. He's actually one of my patrons at Patreon, so I do thank them quite a bit. And this is a beautiful, beautiful stamp. I actually did print making for a long time, making your own stamps and stuff in college. And it was the most fun I had out of all the drawing and painting classes I took. Print making was the best. So I can appreciate that. And it's wax sealed. So why the heck not? Now, what is he talking about? Well, this was the first one I got because it was actually in the same side as the missiles. And this is a marshmallow popper. You've probably seen stuff like this, but you might not have seen one exactly like this before. And it's basically just uh, like you hold it kind of like this, I'm guessing. And then you pop out a uh, marshmallow. The cool thing is that obviously this would make a killer stock. But at the same time, this whole, it's 100% sealed. It, it could actually be a really good plunger tube if you wanted to add a spring and a catch to it. I am very impressed with how this thing turned out, but I think more likely it's going to be converted to be a stock. He also sent me this, which I have actually, when he sent me this the next time I went to Goodwill, I found one exactly like it. Didn't pick it up because I already had one, but this is another marshmallow popper, a miniature marshmallow popper. Same thing, you pull that back, push that forward, it shoves air out the barrel. But this one has a built-in hopper which is totally useful. I'm not sure what exactly I could use it for because the way it works is you fill in marshmallows in here and then they feed down into the hopper and that's how you fire it. And it produces quite a bit of air. The only problem I have is that the, uh, the like connection to feed the marshmallow down into this tube is way too subtle for something for Nerf. But if I were to take this entire tube right here and mount it to like a PVC wire or something like that, using a blaster, that would be totally awesome. So not a whole lot of use for it being a marshmallow blaster unless you actually like using marshmallows. But for what this thing includes right here, this is really nice, thick, rigid plastic. And that's beautiful. That's the kind of stuff I need to use on blasters more often. And last but not least, Another one in the form of one of the original marshmallow shooters. And this thing, same exact concept. You just fill it full of marshmallows. And this one actually has somewhat of a uh, removable kind of looking stock thing. At least it feels like it's removable, not stock hopper. I swear to God, I popped one of these things off at Goodwill. But same concept, you fill it full of marshmallows and pump it and it launches marshmallows, which is crazy cool. And he also sent me one more, which was the original marshmallow shooter that I have reviewed so far. It's actually right here. Again, I have to apologize. I'm digging through boxes and trying to get everything back because I didn't realize I deleted everything, but these things are awesome. I've done a tag back on them. It's a tiny yet stupidly powerful air tank. Very, very useful. Thank you, Fatty Botchi. I have plans for most of these. Some of these I don't know what to do with, but that's the best part is at least I have it. So if I do think of something, I have it in possession to use it. On to the next one. 
Up next, we've got a beautiful postcard that was sent to me. And it reads, from Varric W, Dear Walcom, you should buy the Nerf Regulator and do a review on it. And it is, and where is the best place to get a Strife cheap? I looked on Amazon, but they're about $40. And with that money, I could probably buy another Modulus. What's the best, cheapest foam dart gun for modding? Keep making great videos. P.S. The deleter is awesome. Please make more guns like it. Alrighty, well, first things first. Uh, when it comes to uh, the Nerf Regulator, I have held one. Captain Xavier did procure one, and I really, really like it. And I will probably do a build in the future. In fact, it could be a Patreon-inspired build. If uh, that reaches a certain threshold, then I will have the funds to do something I've wanted to do with the Deleter. Or, well, the Deleter Regulator. I mean, it's not a secret that I would like to just make a Regulator a Deleter. That would be awesome, but I need to buy two Regulators, and that's really expensive, and I can't afford that. So hopefully Patreon can provide such a thing in the future. And where is the best place to get a Strife for cheap? Well, if you're looking for a Strife itself, really the only store I found in the US that still has them is Toys R Us, and they'll run you about 20, 25 bucks. However, you can get like a Nerf Rapid Red, or the Rebel Rapid Red on Amazon for like 12 bucks, and it's the same blaster, but without all the tactical. In fact, I like the shell a lot more on the Rapid Red, but it uh, doesn't use the same flywheel cage. I believe he uses the same one as a demolisher, if I'm not mistaken. I probably am, but you can get it. And that's probably the best place to get a Strife if you're just looking for a Strife to, you know, upgrade motors and stuff in. And, uh, yeah, it's, they're stupidly expensive, and you'd probably be better off buying another Modulus for 40 bucks. I, I would wait. I know that the, the whole, uh... Strife is back in production because they have released a updated box for it or that they showed it off and that means that they obviously have it in production. I don't know what they're doing though. I don't know why they haven't made it made it easier to get one because it's probably the most popular blaster. Seriously. And what is the best cheapest foam dart gun for modding? It kind of depends on what you're looking for. That's one of those things where you kind of have to weigh your options of what you want to have. Obviously, the more popular the blaster is, the easier it is to find modification stuff for it. So things like the Retaliator and then the Long Shot and the Strife, all of those are really easy blasters that have tons of documentation and tons and tons of aftermarket parts if you need to get that kind of stuff. But I mean, you can go, it, it really depends on where you want to go with this. and. That's kind of the whole fun of Nerf. I mean, you could stick to the really popular ones, or you could even go off the rails a little bit, like do stuff like the Fearless Fire, which I know Open Flywheel Projects put out a cage for it not too long ago, and I only know that because I went there to look for a cage, and they finally had Fearless Fire cage, and I'm super happy about that because I have those three Fearless Fires that I need to put new cages in. So that's going to be cool. And yeah, the Deleter is awesome. Please make more guns like it. Well, I actually have two side-by-side -side blasters in production right now. One of them is a flywheeler and the other is a springer. That's stuff you will see very, very soon. I'm still working on them though, so stay tuned. Up next, I've got a box from Super Vaporeon, which came with this beautiful note that reads, Dear Walcom, remember last time I sent you a Slingfire stock? Well, a week later I found a I found two plug and play gun shooting games with better stocks. I completely forgot them until now. Oops. I also saw you started commissions. I have an engineering challenge for you if you'd be willing. See back below. Whatever. I have a certain special idea if you'd be willing. I've also added a little knickknack for you, very similar to the last one, a little bit better than that McDonald's toy. Also, ignore the bite marks, I was hungry. Retaliator with rapid strike internals and a recon barrel with undermounted rail blaster. Well, let's see here. The Retaliator with rapid strike internals is probably possible because the pusher and the, uh, the firing mechanism, all, you know, all that stuff, that's all electronic, so that could pretty much go anywhere. It's just a matter of cutting out space for the pusher and yeah the gluing a flywheel cage in the front of it i mean it's totally possible to do would it look good uh maybe it it would take a lot of work i know that kind of stuff isn't gonna fit there but with enough epoxy putty and time anything is possible so yeah it, it's definitely possible but I, I i don't know if it's worth doing and then the Recon Barrel with Undermounted Rail Blaster. Well, I don't have a Rail Blaster yet. I'm hoping to get one very, very soon as soon as Busby gets back to answering my emails because I sent out my application for a media thing while they were in the middle of changing their media person, I guess. So the first person asked me, hey, what's your, uh, your mail address? And I gave it to them. And a month later, I'm still trying to contact them. And I got sent to another person. And the other person's barely answering my email. So Busby, please get back to me. I've sent you like three emails and you're not responding. And it, it hurts. Please, please get back to me, Busby Senpai. So after I know how long and how good the rail 
blaster is, or the monorail as we know it now, I'll be able to see if that's possible. And it just says Walcom Read Me on the back. So what is in the box? Well, the first thing that was sent was, of course, a retaliator with a recon barrel, which is awesome. So I'll see if that's going to be a thing that will happen. I don't know if Vaporeon is commissioning me for something like that, but if they are, they'll have to contact me through the usual thing. But they did send me another stockade, which is great, because the one I had I destroyed to mount the front onto the Paradigm Shift, and I really like the stockade. It's not better than the whole, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, barricade, but it does have a way better looking shell because it's nice elite blue and white. Uh, the motor cage and everything in these are pretty bad though. You should usually swap those out with one from a barricade. But that is awesome because I didn't have one and I thank you for it. And I actually have a build plan. It's still on the table. I haven't gotten around to starting it yet using one of these. So look forward to that in the coming weeks. And then, of course, he did mention. And then there's all these parts from plug and play kind of uh, games that, you know, people buy. They, they don't own video game consoles, so they buy these things. And they're usually like light gun games and stuff like that, which is totally fine. But I never thought about using them for stocks and integration pieces and so forth. So we've got this one right here, which is a beautiful stock from a shotgun or rifle that would work awesomely. And then we've got this one right here. And thankfully he's already removed all the extra stuff that I would just have to remove. So I don't have to deal with that, but we've got this one right here. All these things, this is awesome because these are just parts that I can use for builds where I don't want to murder a sling fire stock. And I'm kind of tired of using sling fire stocks because they all look the same. This is much better. I encourage this kind of stuff. So thank you, Supa. And four grips. Man, if I would have had one of these, it would have made my whole uh, doing the Thompson build a little bit easier. And then even a scope that was on one of these that, again, cosmetically is rad as heck. So that is very, very useful to the modern in me. Thank you so much, Supa. But of course, also sent me a bag with uh, stuff for doing a, you know, Rapid strike, uh, rapid strike inside of a retaliator. So there's a rapid strike pusher in a cage and stuff in here, which is awesome. I'll have to probably try to do that, but it's gonna be hard. And last but not least, this little thing. Now I knew exactly what this was because I had several of them. I actually had a bunch of these brand new inbox, still shrink wrapped, unopened in the storage unit. You know, when I moved to Idaho, I left stuff in the mom's storage unit and when she passed, well, they lost the storage unit and she never told me. So I lost all that stuff. I actually don't have really too much from my childhood anymore, which is kind of depressing. I tried not to think about it, but inside, of course, is one of the Burger King Pokemon Gold cards. I remember the day these were still a thing. I walked into our local Burger King and I said, do you guys have any of the gold cards? And they said, yes, but the only one we have is Jigglypuff. And I said, that is exactly the one I want. And I got it. And they used to have a little certificate of authenticity in there, but it is a card of, well, plated gold. I, I've opened these up before. It's really not gold in any sense. It's not worth anything, I don't think. And on the back, it has another picture of the Pokemon, in this case, Jigglypuff, with the Pokedex entry from the original game. So it is very, very pretty, and I'm glad to have one back. Thank you so much, Supa. You know me so well. On to the next box. This next box is pretty crazy because it was wrapped in tie-dye duct tape, covered in Star Trek stamps, and, well, it's full of the most random stuff I have ever received through the post whatsoever. And I definitely appreciate that because random stuff is always useful to a modder like me. And it came with this note, which reads, Haha, dear Walcom S7, enclosed inside this package is one Delta Rune shield without handles. Don't hear your arm size. Good call because my arms are actually pretty thick because I'm pretty big. One Sentinel AR removed, painted fancy barrel and stuff made of drum for my cleaning job, yay. One Shield Blaster 2000, probably broken, various doodads and such, ever since the Whip Messenger is I like to call it the Revolver Ocelot, and I remember that comment. I, I swear I've mentioned this again in a video, <laughs> the Revolver Ocelot. I've been a big fan of your commentary. I hope the supply package I've sent will help you create more things. I decided against the Shield Blaster Storm Fire Merge because I'm more casual, but who knows, maybe you should do something with it and make it Gundam cool. The shield is made of art canvas, duct tape, and copious amounts of hot glue with four small nails in the corner glued over for safety. I'm sure you can do better though. Anyway, have a great day filled with determination. Pigfish99, aka Lord Hayate. Hayate? 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 
something like that. But thank you very much. Now there is a lot of random stuff in here. The most notable of which is this thing. This is a super soaker called a Shield Blaster Series 2000. And I have very little information on what the heck this thing is. I haven't looked it up quite yet, but it has a strap right here that you would put on your arm. And then it has a grip inside, which your arm will rest on, which is very, very nice. It's got a crank right here, which is how you pump the water. And it has four different nozzles for various soakages. And then of course it has this whole shield that flips out and can rotate, which is super cool. Now, the obvious use for something like this is, of course, well, I mean, it, it is fairly obvious. This thing looks and feels very similar to Exia's GN sword. So, that is uh, definitely something I'm looking into with this, but I don't really want to ruin it because it's old. It's, isn't there, I think there was a copyright somewhere on this thing. But yeah, it is, it is not something that's new. This is very, very old. Yeah, 2003 from Mattel. So that tells you a lot. That is really interesting. And then we've got, this is the Delta Rune shield they were talking about. Very squarish. It's canvas, duct tape, and yeah, nails and everything like that. It's very, very heavy for a shield. I'm not sure if I would use it as a shield. I believe this is the thing from, uh, well, it was kind of teased in there whole letter. This is the logo, the kind of decoration thing you see in Undertale, which is a game I really, really like. Not as much as some other people. I mean, the fan base for Undertale is crazy, but I do think it's a great game, and this is beautiful. And I'm, but, well, I don't know. I think I'm just going to put it up in my workshop with, I mean, I've received another thing very similar to this in the past, so I might as well just keep it up in there and have it on display. I don't really want to get it all shot up and everything like that. Up next is, of course, this is the uh, Sentinel. Oh my god, I almost forgot this. This is the Sentinel that they sent me with that same Delta Room motif on there. It is very, very scratched up. I don't know if this is how it was sent. Um, I do know it was packaged loosely in a box with a whole bunch of other stuff, and it got really roughed up in the box and uh, just really just almost destroyed really it does have a little end on it which is interesting and this wrapping of athletic tape on the priming bar which makes it a lot more comfortable that's awesome and this thing does fire perfectly fine so heck yeah sentinel awesome and then just to give you a taste of the random stuff that's in here we got a strap a garbage can lid arm from a chair, some particle board, tassel, various Sonic the Hedgehog rings, some tubing of some description, some plastic blobs, some more stuff with key chain things and they're floating all around in this box. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just full of random stuff. Which is great, because I just get to put this in the parts box, and I'm sure at some point I'll be like, you know what, I really need some, like, copper-like tubing just as decorate. Oh, I have that, and a big Sonic the Hedgehog ring. Actually, I have no idea what I'll use something like this for, but hey, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog-looking ring, so that's perfectly fine. And a random spring, and stuff like that. So, thank you very much for the very thoughtful gift, because that is going to be very... You never know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, you never know what this would be used for. And, you know... That's really important. In fact, I think I have a use for this right now, so this will probably stay out. But that's not all, because while these are the boxes I opened up last time, there are actually bunches of new boxes I haven't opened yet. So that's where this video becomes even more crazy. So let's get into it. This first box was sent to me by Kitsune, Kitsune, and Commander Wolf, I believe, was the alias they went by. Maybe it will tell me in the box. I'm not entirely sure. And apparently it is handmade, although I have no idea what it entails. So let's see. Holy crap. Oh, I... Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see that. I can totally see that. I see, I see some interesting stuff in here. Oh my god. I'm freaking out. Holy crap. Okay, so, 
I, I, where do I start with this one? Um, I need to read. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you, you're kidding me. How did you even do that? That's cloudy. I hope you're seeing this stuff, dude. Holy crap. That's incredible. Oh, please. Oh my God, there's even more. Is this just instructions? Please tell me you actually have something in here that's... It just says patch has heat and bond ultra. No steam, please, with a folded pillowcase and something to protect it. No steam, it's an iron on patch. I don't own an iron, unfortunately. But that is, that is incredible. There's different styles too. I, oh my God, I'm freaking out. It's, it's really something special to see like this thing. Oh my gosh, these are Velcro. I, I don't even know. And I haven't even touched the thing that I'm gonna squeal about. That's incredible. And this is a really peeved Jigglypuff with a dart. Or you are going to be in every single video ever. I don't know how, but you will. Jigglypuff's my favorite Pokemon, by the way. I don't know why, it just sings to me. Get it? Get it? It's because Jiggly, Jigglypuff sings. And, what does it say? Emergency dart. <laughs> and their card, which is Sleepy Fox Workshop. Handmade plushies, jewelry, crochet, 3D prints, embroidery, accessories, custom orders, welcome. And Etsy shop and Facebook page, also follow on Instagram. Holy crap, I will have links to that down in the description box below. Oh my god. It's so soft. It's so soft, and it's a Jigglypuff. It's a very beat off Jigglypuff, which is not something you usually get when you get Jigglypuff. You always get the Jigglypuff with the dead eyes and the I am going to draw on your face while you're sleeping. This one's just peeved. And instead of holding a microphone like it does in the anime, it's holding a dart. So this Jigglypuff is gonna tag the crap out of you. I don't know what to say other than thank you so much, especially for the Walcom S7 patches that go with that. That is absolute insanity. I'm gonna need a moment. That's incredible. Thank you so much, you two. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Oh my gosh. Make sure you check them out, seriously. <laughs> wow. And, and for those who don't know, my, my birthday is actually in a couple of days, so this this makes everything so much better. And the wife calm is going to freak when she sees this Jigglypuff. Oh, this is awesome. It's funny, because the Jigglypuff I had, I actually had one that um, a girl I liked in elementary school gave to me. And I, I traded her, uh, I believe it was the Vulpix from KFC when they had the Pokemon plushies. And she gave me a Jigglypuff plushie, or like Beanie Baby kind of thing. And I had kept on to it for so long and just lost it. And I never had another one. And now I do. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, that's too much for one package. Seriously. Holy crap, and I still have more I have to open. Oh my, let's get this stuff back in here. Make sure you check out the description for the Sleepy Fox workshop. That's incredible. Do we have to continue? I guess we do. Well, this is a big box that I haven't opened and I have no idea what's inside. This one comes from Kyle. I am a little, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank after the Jigglypuff, what their handle is. Hopefully they have something in here to remind me. I believe it's somebody from my Discord. Uh, I, I don't exactly remember. I'm I'm really on cloud nine right now. What? Okay. Well, I'm already seeing interesting things. Okay. Holy crap. Uh, I've gotten most of it out now. You can kind of guess what's here. But there is a note. Thank you. 
<sighs> Happy birthday, Walcom. I hope this package arrives safely and on on time as it contains a few important items that should be should be include should be included as follow two purple arrow missile things. Which are these original, I believe these are the 11 inch arrows. One big black missiles. One I BMA. One bazooka. One Super Soaker XP 105. Other goodies. Hope this will not be the last. Hope this will not be the last package. There will be more. Have a good time. In good times. Sign somebody I, I literally cannot see. If the Russian is Soviet cutie, okay. Thank you. Holy crap. I couldn't. I, Jigglypuff, give me a break. Okay, this is sitting on my on my desk. I, I, I have a hard time dealing with that. This is from Soviet Kitty, another one of my patrons. Holy crap. Well, let's start with the obvious, which is this beautiful retro Laramie Super Soaker, one of the originals. Not sure if it works, but it's got a power gauge. Oh yeah, it works perfectly fine. It's got a power gauge and everything on it. This is awesome. I really like Super Soakers. I don't know how many people know that. I actually use these just for fun. They're my, my go-to spray the kids and nephews and nieces and stuff like that. So this is awesome. Thank you so much. But most importantly, tag back fodder with the ball zooka. I have never held one of these things before. And yeah, you pull it back and then when you push it back forward, it should fire. That's awesome. I have some balls sent to me from the person who let me do the, sorry, I'm drawing a blank on your name, the person who sent me the Balzuka, uh, the buzzsaw, the buzzsaw. So I get to test this thing out. I actually have the ammo for it. So thanks to them and thank you, Soviet cutie. We've got some waffle head darts. Darts are always welcome. I go through them a lot. We've got one, I believe that's an 11 inch arrow. We've got, uh, it's all taped up. We've got a Nerf bow and arrow with the bow arms all taped up and ready to go. Again, tag back fodder. We love it. And then some arrows to go with it. Holy crap. I can actually use it. I have the ammo for it. Thank you, Soviet kitty. Holy snikes. I'll actually be able to shoot it in a video. I mean, it's not going to do all that well. It's a Nerf bow and arrow. This is one of the first blasters they released. Uh, but hey, at least we have it. And a bunch of darts. And you know nerfers so well because these 50 darts will be used tomorrow at the war that I'm going to, my birthday war pretty much. So thank you so freaking much, Soviet. I do appreciate it. That is some tag back stuff. So that will be added to the tag back list on the Patreon. So if you want to see any of these immediately, you can find the link to vote and stuff if you're one of my patrons on Patreon. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, there's even one more. Ah, uh, what is the last box? This is actually from Amazon. So this was not, this was something somebody had bought for me on Amazon. And this was, I believe, again, Soviet Kitty. <laughs> so this stems from the video I just did on the Busby double shot. This is a really interesting thing. This is the Busby Gunsmoke. I'm actually gonna do a short little unboxing here because I wanna get my actual hands on this. All right, it's free. So the way this thing works is that it has this little plug right here that's full of a material, like a liquid, a smoke liquid, and it uses batteries kind of like a, like a vaping pen or something like that. And so when you pull the trigger, it heats it up and flashes out some of the smoke stuff with every shot. But it looks fairly similar to something you've already seen, which is, of course, the over-under. And it's very, very similar. And yet, it's still awesome. So this thing is an over-under, and it even still has both plunger tubes in here. And if you look, it's kind of hard to see, but it has both air releases still there which is really weird because it only has one barrel. I mean, as far as I know, the bottom barrel doesn't do anything except for push out the smoke. So what the heck were they doing with this thing? I have no idea. This is a really weird reshell and it's got dart storage in the back, similar to how the Predator does it. 
It's got shell storage back there. And this is just way too cool, and it works exactly the same. But the funniest thing is, is that when I saw this, there was a build that I wanted to do, a cosmetic build, mind you, that, again, pertains to how I did the Thompson. And this blaster is perfect for it. The sh shape and everything like that is just flawless for what I want to do with this build. So, if you guys want to see a review of this thing, I know it's a bit late, there's probably other reviews, but if you want to see a review of this, let me know down in the comment section below. I will totally review it before I start cosmetically turning it into another blaster, but this thing is just, it feels really good in the hand compared to some other blasters. The grip is still really stupidly thick, I mean, I don't know how kids grab that, but the actual workings of it feel really good. So thank you for that, Soviet Kitty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is another one of those things where I'm just so glad to have it now. And I didn't even think about it until after that video. There was a comment on that video that said, uh, water pipe shotgun much. And I immediately thought, yeah, actually, that's way better than using the uh, sledge fire as a shotgun. And then I sat there and thought about it. And then I remembered I had looked up the gun smoke for that video because it's very similar to the over under and of course the double shot. And then I realized this is a very, very good shell for that. This would work almost perfectly for that. So most likely that's what I'll do. And well, I mean, it is going to happen. That's why I have it here is that I just have to spend some time and some foam and some paint and make it look like a water pipe shotgun. So you'll be seeing that fairly soon as well. I've got a lot on my plate, not to mention commissions. So that is awesome. I want to thank every single person that sent me something. You have made this birthday absolutely amazing. I have a war tomorrow I'm going to go to, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I've got a lot of cool things to show them too, things that you guys have sent me. So if you guys are interested in sending anything else, or you know, if you want to show up on camera like them, even letters and stuff like that, um, as long as they're not too long and they have questions, I can certainly answer them. So that's a guaranteed way to have me answer your question. So go ahead and put it down in the, well, the, the stuff will be down in the description box below the address and whatnot. I am really out of it. I'm sorry. I'm blown away. So much cool stuff. And I just can't get over this Jigglypuff. Oh my gosh. And tag back fodder and stuff to build blasters, things I would have never thought about before. This has just been amazing, and I want to thank every single one of you. And this is just a friendly reminder that if you didn't know already, July 16th at midnight, my time, so Pacific time, is the cutoff date for the 50K Maverick tag back. So get your videos in by then, because the next day, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna edit them together. And if you wanna be in on that, this is your only chance, so remember to do that. I'm Walcom7, thank you very much for watching this video, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one.